Today on The Grid, it's part two of our blind photo critiques and holiday recipe show. My co-host is from Kerblakistan. He loves euros with lamb. He's the king of Siam. He's friends with Jean-Claude Van Damme. He was disappointed when they chose Bram. He's a big fan of Wham. It's the real rocket man, Eric Kuna, is here. We've got some awesome giveaways once again, and it all starts in just 30 seconds. The Grid is brought to you by Platypod, the tripod alternative that is changing the world. Everybody has a Platypod. You should, too. Go to platypod.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another live episode. Happy holidays. Christmas is almost here, and we've got a great show. It's part two of our blind photo critiques, which started last week, where we had viewers send in a bunch of images, and we checked through them. And speaking yeah, we of had we, some great, we had some great we images. We had some great images last week. Yeah. We had some great images today. Yeah. Speaking of we, it's Mr. Eric Kuna, the real rocket man. Hey, Scott. He's from Kerblakistan. No or Blakistan. There Kerblakistan. it is. Blakistan. He stole some nukes. Yeah. yeah. Regular stuff. Okay. Anyway, welcome, everybody. We're very glad to Who have you here. Who throws a shoe? Who throws a shoe? Who throws a shoe? Yeah. Remember that? No. Oh, that was odd. Odd job. No, random yeah. task. Random task. Because odd job is the original yeah, Bond yeah. guy. Who Speaking of shoe? throwing a shoe, did you see what happened to the Florida Gators last week? That's what I'm saying. Who throws a shoe? Who throws a shoe and throws the it game? Actually, it was two weeks ago when this. It was aired. two weeks ago. All right. So but who throws a shoe? The Gators are ready to win this game. One he of the Gators a shoe. tackles a guy on the opposing team. LSU was it? LSU. LSU and LSU's trash this year. They're just not any good. They're good enough the guy's to the shoe Gators, comes off. Just saying. The guy's shoe comes off. He picks up. They were national champions, by the way. LSU was national champions last year. This year, they have to have a, they have to have someone throw a shoe to win. He picks up the LSU player's shoe and he throws it in the middle of the game, twenty yards downfield. Well, the ref goes, "Ah, oh, unsportsmanlike Black. conduct." They were going to have it. to punt it. That nope. was it. I was it. Lost Don't, in the game. More of the story. Don't, Don't throw, a throw a shoe like Random Task did in Austin Powers. Mm -hmm. Who throws a shoe? Be that as it may, last week in the show, we looked at a bunch of images, but I also gave three awesome low-carb recipes for those of you who are either on a keto plan or anything else, but I've got, I got some good stuff. I got three more today, but All if right. you are into low-carb stuff, I gave away three ridiculously good recipes. He gave away his photo secrets to low carbs. My low carb secrets last week. I'm down 22 pounds this year. And a lot of it is to these secrets of how to eat incredibly delicious food. I don't want to eat crap, low carb stuff. I want to eat good stuff. And that's what this is about is how to cheat the system. That's what it should be. That's my new diet book. I'm not sure if I'm qualified to write a diet book quite yet. <laughs> <laughs> we need to go a little more than 22 pounds to get there. But if I did, you know well then all right and look at it. it says we're ready to wrap the show already oh we're ready to wrap the show well thanks for watching thanks for watching no. guys so we had people turn in images so we lots got, of good uh, images critiques huh we do have critiques blind have... critiques and less people put their watermark on it then we yeah then they're not they so are. blind here we go let's look at our very first one boom 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 and we got prizes which we'll talk about oh, in a minute boom goes the dynamite uh uh, Dude, this first shot is really good. Zoom in to the feet. What is go, it? What? Zoom into the, the the feet there. Oh, were you thinking that it's a go, composite? Please, please, please zoom in on that. Are you thinking it's a composite? There's a shadow under her foot. Okay. It it it's. I know it's a little suspect. It's suspect. It's it's something's off. Something is off there. Is it because there's no shadow under the back foot? Yeah, it's, it, it doesn't look right. You're right. Something it's, looks funky. It's too funky. bad because I was loving this shot. I was loving that shot, but there's a funky thing. I think I'm gonna call composite on that. All right. Well, if you're the photographer that did this and you're watching this show, let us know. If it's a composite, it's okay, because all you got to do is fix that back foot. Yeah, if you fix the back foot, it, well, you know what it is, is you see the back foot coming up, but you got nothing behind it. And then I'm seeing shadows run along. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Uh-oh. 
I love I this I shot. Don't. I'm hoping that it's not, but it doesn't matter if I mean if it is and they do it good, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Well, it right. also it also there's something weird about the scale. It's just me. Something. Oh, else. you're right. The scale's wrong. The scale might it might yeah this might be a composite. Well, that's it's, okay. It just looks off. Anyways, there you go. Uh, this just looks, I don't know. This yeah. this upsets me. Yeah, it looks terrifying. It just it's looks an upsetting terrifying. shot. Yeah. And that's kind of nothing. Yeah, it's it's somebody yeah. riding by. I'm not digging that. It's kind of weird. That's um, upsetting. Colors and light. I could really like this. I could really like this, but it was thrown off. I th I think it's a composite. Yeah, I'm starting to think it's a composite too. Also, why would she be walking towards where there's no door? Yes. Like she's going to slam it's, into that that's wall. That's what I'm saying. The scale's Eric, she's right. Gonna slam the into scale's that wall. off. Bang. Like how she's turned. It, it's, it's a composite. Can I tell you something? The colors are so great. And it, it's got leading lines and all. But you're right. She would, she would on be it, slamming straight into that door. It, and if it you is, worked on it, it, it could be awesome. And maybe just move big, her a little she? bit. You know, but she's yeah. too big. Unless too these big. are really, really low doors. Yes. I don't know. Oh, and also the angle, like you said, the angle. It's just, it's just, it's a composite. Uh, I think you're you right. You can comment on it, but I'm telling you, I, I call composite. Yeah, on that I'm calling one. composite I call too. composite that could be good, but just needs a little bit more work. Yep, I'm calling composite too, which is a shame. So, if it's a composite, we need to work on our compositing skills. We got classes which, for that. A composite's fine. The composite's fine. Yeah, yeah. It, we're not we're not saying it's bad it's just, because you it's can't a composite. Let me see that it's a composite. You got to make it look good. This yeah. one's just disturbing. I just it's yeah, it bothers me. It bothers um, me, and unfortunately, the colors are weird. It's a this little too is just dark. somebody driving by. There's nothing. Yeah. She's not doing anything interesting. The guy's not doing anything interesting. It's not great color. It's not great light. It's there's no light. There's no gesture. There's no color. It's just a th somebody driving by. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So we got a little work to do, especially on the composite. There we go. All right, what do we have here? Huh, what do we have here? Long exposure. Wow. Man, that's very different. Oof, yeah, I was going to say the same These thing. These are like three One, different photographers. One, two, and curveball. Okay, first off, this is nicely done because it's so clean. Yeah. It's a nice long exposure. It's yeah, good clean. amount of time, not too short. I'm not sure I wouldn't, I wouldn't crop it a little tighter and get rid of that stick back there. That stick and this stick are drawing my eye. I'd get rid of that yeah. and that. And maybe but even I, darken some I of that think, front, too. I the think left. there's a better crop here. I don't need to see that ugly bush coming in from the side. I don't need to see as much of this. Yeah, getting because, better. Because the nice part of this really is right in here. This is nicely done. You got to get, right. get rid of that stick and darken this up here. Let's get a, a brush. Sticks in the background. Darken like, this area go. up here. That doesn't need to be that bright. That's not helping anything. Even darken that one to the left there too. Over here. Yeah. Yeah, that's not helping the situation, is it? Mm -mm. There we go. That's better. And let me add just, I just want to see what adding a little bit of yellow would do. Oh, ooh, ooh ah. ah, let's see a side by side. So, and you got it really Anyway, I mean, it's a good shot. Yeah, it's a good shot. It's well, yeah. it's technically very well carried out. I think you can make it a little stronger. And then what happened here? This this needs everything. First off, I think I would just skip this one altogether. I mean, we we can make it look a little better and stuff. I don't know. This is well. They what did you like about it? You, yeah. You and liked, what am I looking at? Where's the subject? Yeah. The you liked I think that kind of misty snow kind of thing in the middle. There. Yeah, but but there's not much to it. Yeah, and, and there's no real focal point. Like, I don't know where to look, and I'm not sure what I'm looking at. It's just some trees. Yeah, well, it's that there's no foreground, middle ground, background. It's just kind of like middle ground, background. And this shot, if anything, should have been wide.
so you can see what's going on. It looks like she's talking on a cell phone, but it's not, even at that, it's, it's not awesome. It's stronger this way, but it's just like, yeah. you, you're, you really got that, like that, that's one of the nicer waterfall or creek, you know, yeah. stream shots we've seen. Literally one of the nicer ones. Cause it's and then hard it just too. fell apart with the other two. Yeah. It's hard sometimes with that because you got the, you're in the shadows. Uh, Dude, they did a nice yeah. job on that one. Yeah. So I would say more of this, the right light, the right edge. You did everything right here. And then I don't know what happened to you here and here. I mean, that's just like a snapshot. Oh, look, there's a girl on her phone, yeah, which is. That... Let me ask you a question. How rare is it to see a teen or a young person on their phone? Is anyone going to go, ooh, what's she doing? Oh, phone. I mean, come on. Yeah. Yeah, it's, you got to yeah. work on that stuff. All work, right. El Worko, Worko. All right. And now look at this. I'm so like this. I can't. Oh, oh yeah. Nice. I love detail shots, and that's really well composed. Mm hmm. I'm not sure I like the post-processing, but I like the composition. Yeah, composition is nice on that one. This one's a little messy. So this one I think is terrific. This one's pretty good. I think you probably have better stuff in your portfolio than this one. What do you think on the last one? Yeah, I, I don't like it. I mean, it's, you know what it is? The, the prominent foreground element is distracting to, Very. What, to what it is. You know, like, it, it looks out of place. Then it looks disproportionate. I know that that's the jet behind right. it. It's disproportionate. That's so well done. And I really not. like the middle one. Like you said, I like the composition of that one a yeah, lot. Yeah, a lot. However, I th it's weird. It's it's almost like I think you're trying to do like a arts like artsy kind of yeah, like it, painterly look. Yeah, it looks out of look. place. Like it it looks very painterly. Yes. But yet the text is crisp and, you know, so there's like, it's weird. It's messing. But the compositionally, I like it. And yeah, that last one, yeah, the, the foreground element is way too prominent. Sandy says, I think it's a mirror. On that one we're doing, maybe doing the makeup. Maybe, I was thinking maybe makeup or something like that. I don't know. But again, it's just not a, it's, it's an okay shot. Yeah. It's just an okay shot. It's an okay shot. All right, let's, let's roll on. Well, these are all pretty good. They're all moment of action shots. So that's, that's where most people fall down yes, on sports on shots. Sports shots. Not getting the ball, peats, the connection right? with the ball. And it also like there, like it's right before they hit. Like if the ball was way up here, it'd be like, Right. Wouldn't make sense. That's pretty good. I, I, I do the, like the it. The sand keep being kicked up. That's really nice. Yep. I would like to see the background a little more out of focus, but at least it's, it's some out of focus. Uh, this is a good action shot. These mm -hmm. are all pretty good. Now, it's going to be very hard to eliminate the crowd at beach volleyball because they're right there. They're like in the middle of everything. That's why you... But look how out of focus this one is. If we could apply that level of out of focus to this one, of course, that would be great. But it's, I don't know if you're going to... It's going to be hard. It's like going to be hard because you you've got multiple people far, in the scene. The only way to do that is to get farther away to get but that you know same what? frame. Look how nice and tight they all are cropped. A lot yes. of good stuff going on here. Good job. A lot of good yeah. stuff. A lot of good stuff going on there. Hey, we're going to take great. a short one. Uh, we've got something very special coming up in January, and it is going to be awesome, and we want you to be a part of it. And we're going to talk about that coming up next. And when we get, come back, we're going to be looking at more images, and I'm going to be sharing some very good holiday low-carb recipes. They're not really. They're for after the holidays because they're not holiday. They're not goodies. They're not. They're just everyday eating kind of January 3rd kind of stuff. It's January 3rd. January 3rd. All right. We'll see you right after this. Don't go away. Close your eyes and picture a faraway place you've never been. What city or country comes to mind? Paris? Venice? The Grand Canyon? Maybe it's Morocco, Rio, New York, or Hawaii. Now let's go a little bit deeper. Can you picture the delicious food there? What the people are wearing? Picture their smiles, the architecture, the museums. Don't forget the busy shopping streets and charming cafes. You can almost smell the delicious coffee and fresh baked bread. 
Vivid images like this can be more than just in your mind. They can be in your hands. That's why we love looking at travel photography and being able to capture travel images that are so captivating that they make people long to go there themselves, right there. That's truly a gift. When you create photos like these, you've inspired the viewer to seek out these new horizons, to have these wonderful experiences for themselves, and see these remarkable places in person. Creating beautiful travel images isn't luck. It's camera technique, it's creative expression, it's light and composition. And it's what you do after, in fact, in post-processing, that it all comes together to create simply unforgettable photographs. This January, you'll have an opportunity to learn for yourself exactly how it's all done, all online, where for two days, in two training tracks, you can totally immerse yourself in learning exactly how to create travel images that inspire, move, and impress. These photography masters will be sharing their latest techniques, their hard-earned secrets, and their post-processing wizardry during an event that will change the way you create travel images forever. All presented online, affordable and accessible. And it's for everyone who loves to travel and dreams of returning home with stunning images that capture the essence of their journey. This is the Travel Photography Conference, coming January 20th and 21. Your tour to making better travel images is about to take off. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by b &H Photo, the professional source since 1973. Hey, -o, we're back. Scott here with Mr. Kuna. We got some giveaways. We're going to go through those real quick. Here's what we're giving away today. It's pretty nice stuff, if I don't mind saying so myself. First off, we've got this great book from Harold Davis. Creative Garden Photography. Come on. Who doesn't want that book? Right? I think this could be really, really good. I think this could help a lot of people. We're giving that away from our friends at Rocky Nook. Also, Light on the Landscape from William Neal. So, light is such an important aspect, pretty much the most important aspect, uh, once you're in front of a great landscape, is the light. And so, yep. both of those great books, we're giving those away today. If you don't win them, you can go to rockynook.com and pick them up or get them at Amazon or Barnes & Noble, wherever you get your books. The Lytra, the Lytra 2.0. We're giving one of these away today. These things are really, I mean, they're incredibly rugged. Rug rugged. Look at that. that. Boom. Doesn't even just like. And that's the one we're shipping you. And that's the one. No, it's an empty box. There's nothing in there. <laughs> I wouldn't it do It still that. is pretty that. It's pretty rugged. I it's bet a you ridiculously could do, rugged, I, you could but I, do I was that just having it. fun with it. But anyway, we're going to give that away today. The, the Lytra Torch 2.0. So. And they're really cool. We're gonna someone's gonna win one of those. Uh, we're gonna be giving away the platypod gooseneck. So if you have a platypod, you attach these, and you can do stuff like this. You can attach like a oh look, it's a Lytra. They're ma it's a match made in heaven. But you can attach other stuff, cameras yeah, and flashes it. and whatever can, you want. Whatever right? you want to do. All right, what else we got? We've got, we got um, the um, uh, Boris Effects Optics. Boris Effects Optics. We talked a lot about this last week. It is such an incredible. It, it, because it's different than what most other effects plugins do. They offer different stuff. Uh, really, really great. So um, but we're giving away a copy of that plugin for Lightroom and Photoshop. Or is it just for Photoshop? No, it's, it's Lightroom, Lightroom and Photoshop. Okay. And then uh, a Slick Pick portfolio. So Slick Pick is a great site that makes sites just for photographers. And uh, the portfolio level one, they actually assign a designer to help you get it just the way you want it. So that's pretty cool. So that's yeah. coming up. We're giving away all of that stuff. And they can get that 25% off Slick Pick as well. Yep. If they go to that slickpick.com. Oh, also, you know what? Let's Kelby give away one. a Kelby One membership. Yeah. Kelby One Pro that. membership. Because this will make a great gift and it's not too late. I know it's the 23rd, but figure it this way. You can have it tomorrow. Yeah. It's so not too late. it's never too late. So go get a Kelby One Pro. They will love it because they're going to use it all year long. And every time they do, they'll think wistfully of you. Wistfully. 
Yep. And then they'll find out about all these cool discounts. Yeah, they'll find out about all kinds of discounts and stuff. Secret stuff for just remembers. Okay. There you go. Uh, let's see what else we got. We got some shout outs. Who's here? Yeah, so we got uh, Sandy joining us from Troy, Michigan. Uh, we have Martha from Ohio saying hi. We got Lori from Newfoundland saying hi. We got Sherry uh, from Michigan saying hello. We got Cheeky Nando all the Cheeky way there Nando. from uh, Lisbon, Portugal tuning in. Uh, we got Pat from SF. I from miss East Nando. Don't you SF. miss Cheeky Nando? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Uh, maybe we'll get to see him next year, right? You know so. what I was planning on doing was going to Lisbon, yep, yep. going up to Porto, yep. and then going to Morocco. Yeah. Still could I happen. We, we talking about could it. happen in 2021. Yeah. It sure could. 2021. There we go. Uh, Diane Arnold from San Diego. Uh, we got Kathy over there from uh, California as well. We got Karen from Ireland. Alan from Ireland. Vancouver. Uh, Vancouver. I love Vancouver. Uh, Lewis from Maryland. Mike from Phoenix. Judy from Long Island, New York. Kathy A from Larkspur, Colorado. A sunny, that, so. snowy Larkspur. Yeah, so all over the place. There we go. Glad to have everybody here today. Yeah. Uh, last week, we asked our folks to uh, send in images, blind photos. So we're not going to mention their name. We're just going to look at their photos. We're going to give honest critiques. And uh, All right, what else we got? Let's look and see what we got next. We got this one. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, being, oh, now I can see it. <laughs> I was just seeing a black screen. Oh, he was just seeing a black <laughs> screen. Okay. Hmm. All right. All right. Okay. So th these are not, they're all pretty good. This one, obviously, at a better time of day would look better. It is later in the day. It is later in the day. But it's not a quite little as bit late. later in the day. Would yeah, be another even hour later, you'd have a killer shot. Because I think you got a nice composition there. You got some yeah. decent clouds. You got a foreground, you got a middle ground, you got a background, you got an interesting subject. Yeah. Little later in the day. Well, if you go to go to that middle one, um, like that. That's, that's later in the nice, day. So that's a nice <laughs> shot. It's a little bit. You know what though? This is this needs a cropping. Yeah, because that uh, those bushes. The bushes are not helping you, not and helping you got it. too much foreground. Got to get rid of the edge of that bush. Better. Yeah. That's much a nice better. photo. The time of day. Yeah. Much the look how much lower the light is. It's softer. Yep. It's flattering. Well, especially out in the southwest there, that's yep. you've got to watch because the yeah, the, you get those highlights on the mountains and then the highlights in the shadows. Killer. So it's not fair for Eric and I to look at a photo like this because we live in the Tampa Bay area of Florida. We mm -hmm. see stunning sunsets like every other day. Like it is sunset capital of the world. It's just like our sunsets are amazing. So this is all right. I mean, you, you, you did it right. You got a foreground, you got a middle ground, your horizon line is up a little high. Um, there's not much going on above. So you could have moved that horizon line a little higher and you could add a little less foreground. But I mean, technically as a photographer, you're nailing it. So let's yeah. just wait a little longer. Yeah. And you can't say, oh, but the tour bus, or I couldn't get there. Yeah. Like, if you want to make a better photo, you got to do what it's part it, about what good you photography. Do. Good photography. Um, photography is hard. Uh, and this one just needs a little better cropping. Or just move. Move forward a little, you know. Yeah, just move move to bit. the right, I think, would have helped you on this one. And this one's okay. Yeah. It's not nearly as, good, as interesting or as good as those. Because we've all seen the a sunset at the beach with rocks. Well, and the... the the rocks aren't like leading you towards something now they're or just kind of all the over. rocks aren't prominent enough in the they're foreground where it's yeah it's just it's, it's but like you said it's a they're good photos photographer yeah let's see what we have here Well, these are very nicely done. Of course, I mean, that's like commercial quality. Yeah, it's great. That's great very commercial nicely quality done. quality stuff. Great, great lighting. This is really nice. It's like they did almost like an architectural look for a snoot and a grid and a and rocket a, blower to clean your blower. lens. <laughs> and I like that it's red. I, this is just a cleverly done, it is. nicely great lit great, uh, thing. Great sculpting with the lighting. And this is good. I like it. It's very... Um, 
like fine art, fine arty architect. Uh, it's all good. This is a very good photographer. So it's all over the place, right? Yeah. It doesn't look like the same person. Now, maybe you could say the same person did these two, but really it's kind of all over the place. But you can shoot a lot of things well. So good, good job. I don't really have anything to tell you. Just keep doing more of it. Yeah, it's great. Well, these are going to be nice. All right, let's take a look at these. These are very nice. Yeah. Okay, can, this one. You can one. tell by the thumbnails. <laughs> yeah, you can tell by the thumbnail. Look how nice that is. Yeah. So you got the... Reflection of the aurora. Yeah, you got the you northern got the stars lights. And the reflection as well. I mean, just... That's spot on. Yeah. And that's, that's one of the better beautiful. shots I've seen uh, of that setting. That's in Iceland. Yep, um, Iceland. And uh, it's one of the better ones of that. Because right. usually people will try to get a little closer. Yep. What do you got to do to fix this? Get rid of those lights. There's these couple lights. A couple on of the lights right. on the I was far say the right same side, thing. way over this right side in the corner. I can't. Yeah. Right side center. Yeah, it's right, right there. Over here and on it's the just edge, like so corner, out of place the for the photo. So the photo, out of place. Yeah, you got still reflection, stars, Get rid out in the those. middle of nowhere, and then you Two got these, seconds in these couple lights Five sitting seconds. over there. This is you're a night shooter, aren't you? Yeah, night and twilight, definitely. That's nice. It's not an easy place to look, but it, it's interesting. It makes me want to go, ooh, where is that? That looks like fun. Well, you've I got like the, the leading line of the curb yep. going down. Oh, really yeah. nice. And the road um, and everything. It's, it's good. It's, that's a nice shot. This is a nice shot. This is a very nice shot. Yeah, same thing. you got the curve of the city leading you down the photo. Yeah, good job. Yeah, you. These will be good, too. <laughs> you can tell from the thumbnails. Well, they're going to be good light. Yeah, definitely. This looks like, I'm, I'm guessing, New Zealand? I know. I want to be there. I know. These are beautiful. That and one's... This um, one's the least of the three. Least of the three. However, I can see what you're going for. Because you got a that big, sky ugly... sky yeah, and look, the mountain. Got, all right. But you got yeah. a big, ugly rock here. And you yeah. got a house here and all. Yeah. You need to get on the other side of yeah, that Yeah. I mean, if you're on the other side of that, that is a killer photo. That's beautiful. That's oh, yeah. beautiful. Yeah, the valley with a light who, coming in. Who do, I, I want to I live there. That's awesome. That's, That's awesome. That's awesome. And this? That could be awesome. If, you're shooting you, at the you right time the of right the day. You got the right sky. You got the right light. Yep. And you're just on the wrong composition. You're on the wrong side of town. That, you know what that is? Probably you were shooting from the window of like where yeah. we were staying. Kind of. Maybe. Okay. But you're shooting at the right time of day. Definitely. Right light. And going to the right places. All right. Composite? Nah, I think that was all on camera. I don't think it's in camera, bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually very well done. A lot of dirt. But... You know, it's very well done for the style. I've seen them yeah. be very cheesy. No, these are nicely done, both of them. Yes. Yep. For what you're doing here, from like, th this is good. Good stuff. You know, you, you got the timing exactly right. It's just, and I hate to say it, I want to see a little more of the helmet. It's a little yeah, too it's tight a weird at the angle. top. Yeah. But man, look, you got the, I mean, get it. Look at the, the, the ball is compressed yeah, you're actually on the seeing mat. the compression of the ball. There, that's a lot of good stuff, you know, and you can see the eyes. It's almost there. Oh, it's so close. But still good. But these are. This is a very talented photographer. I mean, come on. Their Photoshop works. Yeah, good. I actually, I really like the first that one, the composite. Yeah, that's the best. You know, with the way you framed up the whole around, you know, like everything around, like yep, it's, the it's, odd number, and, and it's uh, leading me towards the center. And nice it's blending like a spike into the sand. Through. Yeah, yeah, this, these are they're good. So you know what I would do here would make this one a whole lot better is lower the opacity of the large player in black and white. Yeah. Lower that to like, yeah, too like prominent. it should be way faded back. Fix that and, and you got a winner. But outside of that, it's I'll say whatever stuff. you do, the parents love it. Oh yeah. Parents lost their minds over that. Lost their minds. Here we go.
So close, so close. So you got nice wheel spin, you got the background out of focus. There's only one thing wrong with this. You gotta crop it and make it dynamic. It's not a dynamic photo, but it could be. Do you know where that crop should be? Tight. Dude, it should be. Yeah. I want, I want you to see a little of the road. Yeah. Should be like about, look how much more dynamic this is. And then it's a little washed out. Let's, let's crank the, the contrast, the texture and clarity. Something, we're, we're blowing out some highlights a little bit there. Little whites, little blacks, and I think we're, we're there. But look at the difference. See how the one on the left looks kind of washed out? Yeah. Now that's after the crop too. You could technically crop tighter if you wanted. Well, I think when you get in tighter a little bit, you, you're a little soft on some of, on the panning. And I think that's maybe why they're staying out a little bit more. Maybe to right there, Eric. Maybe just a hair in here. If you're, I'm just talking about dynamicism, like making yeah, a shot. Yeah, 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 no. Go, I mean, that's a hundred times better. Now, let's go to detail and really crank up the sharpening. I mean, this thing should be sharp as crud. Yeah, and I'm telling you, you use Sharpen AI. Oh, done. yeah, use Topaz. And speaking of, I, I'm sure uh, Christina could put that in the chat. We got a link to... Uh, to Topaz, we got a, a deal. They're running thirty percent off right now on Topaz, and then right. if you use the code in the link Christina has in the chat, you get another fifteen percent off. And I know All I'm right, gonna post I'm that gonna go reset well. this to the original. Yeah. So there's the original. Yeah. See, it's just night and day. And then there's the more dynamic version, which would you would have it like that. And the other thing you got to realize, you're you're doing all those edits to the JPEG. Yeah, it's already kind of low res. Yes, imagine if you had the original. Yeah, but that's a picture that comes up on screen and you go... Yeah, wow. Wow. So this, so, this happens so often in sports. So often where... Because yep. I want you you're, to think like about this, You're like afraid of cropping. Th think about this in the big picture. If I'm in the stands, I can see a, a, a driver way off in the distance. Your job is to bring me something I can't see if I'm in the stands. Your yeah. job is to bring me. I want to see his eyes. I want to see detail in the in the bike. I want to see his, what it says on his helmet. Like you need to bring me something really. Like if you, go, I always tell people, go to Sports Illustrated magazine. The very beginning of the magazine is a section called leading off, and you got to go to the print magazine. In the first twelve pages or whatever they decide that issue, you're gonna see the greatest sports pictures you've ever seen. A lot of them are noisy, but they're amazing and they're cropped tight, tight, tight. And when you see those pictures, you say the actual word out loud. You turn the page, you're like, wow. How do you create wow? How do you create impact? You got to get, you got to show people something that they can't just see with their own eyes. In fact, you could even go tighter on this if you really want to like to add dynamicism to it. You could go tighter. And I, I like, I actually like the crop and that's probably where I would keep it. I but, like that. But to give you the idea of how dynamic it can be. Yeah, get in. You could go right in there. Oh, let me back off one. You could go right in there and you feel like you're right. Like, how did you get that? You know, you're so close. But anyway, that's tighter yeah, than I would actually point, go. If you look at the difference, uh, when you zoomed in that, you could see their eye, you, yep. their eyes, you can see their focus, their determination, like. You can't see that. When you did, you're wide and you like got that. the wheel spin, and you got the cloud movement, and all. You did oh, a yeah. lot of stuff I mean, right, that, and that's a hard to get to pan with those bikes like yeah, that. Yeah, it is. That's hard. Same thing here. You just why am I seeing this house and all this other crap? So, uh, um, yeah, Eric, why am I seeing all this other I, crap? I can't, I can't see it. So, <laughs> or not I can. But yeah, exactly. Just get in tight. That's gonna be nice. So look how much more of a dynamic image this makes. Yeah. And then you go and add, you know, some contrast and hit it with some texture. Woo! And then let's go back and look at the original. 
Let me reopen it uncropped, unedited. So that's the original. And then there's the dynamic version. So make your shots dynamic. But they're doing a lot of stuff right. So I don't want to, I don't want you, I don't want you to think I'm coming down on you. And this is kind of, I, I would call this an in-between moment. Because, I mean, he's got a cover on the front wheel. He's drinking. It's, it's not an action moment. I don't know what's going on there. But I know this. It's not a good shot. Mm -mm. Stick with the action stuff. Or get a dynamic shot. Yeah, it's just not. When they're yeah. doing something. All right. We are going to take a short one. When we come back, we've got more image. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Back it up. Beep, 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 beep. I've got my holiday recipes. So my recipes, they're not recipes. My holiday food ideas. These are for people that are like on a keto thing or low carb or whatever. I gave three of them last week's show, including one of my all-time favorites. This week, I got another favorite for you. Again, if you're eating low carb, I've lost 22 pounds this year doing low carby stuff. And, but here's the thing. I want to do it, but I don't want to eat. I don't want to feel like I'm on a diet. I want to eat yummy, super crazy right. food. That's not good for you. All right. So check out this right here. Sola S O L A hamburger buns. Guys, I've tried them all. I've tried smart buns, <laughs> super smart buns, mega buns. This one hands down the best hands down. So they are six net carbs for a hamburger bun. So you can use for a hamburger, cheese, I mean, a, a chicken sandwich, whatever. All right. So, so here's what you do. You buy this bun. Oh, yeah. Six bucks and it's four buns. So what is that? A buck and a quarter a bun? A buck and 50 a bun? It's a buck yeah. 50 a bun. It's not very much. But then you go get a hamburger from anywhere you want. But, but listen, don't get ketchup and mustard on it. You want to put your own ketchup and mustard. Because what happens is at a a drive through they're going to put ketchup and mustard on it and it soaks into the bun and then you can't get it yeah, off yeah so just order like for example the, the the normal thing that most restaurants put on a burger is ketchup onion mustard pickle that's like you go to mcdonald's say hey give me a burger ketchup onion mustard pickle that's kind of the standard burger in america if you get a whopper they add like mayo yeah, and if you get a big yeah. mac they got their own stuff but here's what you're going to do it doesn't matter what burger you ordered just don't order condiments on it add those yourself at your house so if you like onions and pickles or lettuce and tomato all fine this is some deep secrets here right? dude this is i'm going to make like you a great burger deep. great burger here we go it's giving away all the trade secrets go home open us open one of these sola whole uh, golden wheat hamburger bun Open a Sola bun, and they're at solasweet.com. Open the bun. Now, you keep the buns in your fridge, and they're good for about two weeks okay. in your fridge. All right, pop it open, and then add, before you do anything, add your ketchup and mustard or whatever you like on it. Then take a fork, move your burger from the other bun. You don't want that bun they give you. That bun's packed full of carbs, 60, 70 carbs. This is six. Yeah. It's just we're getting, six. We're getting nuts. Bring it over, pop it in the microwave for like 30 seconds. It's going to be hot. It's going to taste great. You put your own ketchup and mustard or whatever on. Oh my gosh, it is so good. Steven, yes. So Steven's got a great thing. I'm going to talk about that, Steven. I'm going to talk about that on my next break. I'm not going to tell you what Steven wrote because I'm going to break it down. I'm breaking it down because Steven, I want to tell you what I do with it because yeah, I have a recipe for it. Of the car, low carb world, secret there. of the low carb world. But I'm telling you what, you can get a burger from anywhere, from Wendy's. But we from might, steak when we shake. come back, we might look at some more images. Who knows? Probably not. <laughs> it's really some recipe show now. <laughs> we'll be right back. More images coming up. Don't go away. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Germany. I'm a French photographer living in Los Angeles, California, and I'm a fine art artist. I love Sneak Peek because you can host all your photos online. You can share the best one through albums with incredible privacy settings. For example, you can just share an album to like three people or for just a number of hours. They have amazing watermarking on the fly where you can just change your mind and watermark and redo the watermark or take it out and it's instant on all your photos. Having an official portfolio is so vital today. 
Now they have an amazing launching deal where for just taking the basic subscription we're offering now, which is roughly $15 a month, you're gonna get a professional designer to do your website for you. All you have to do is fill in a form with a few data and you're good to go. A designer will design your website for you. So if you don't like web design, this is a great opportunity. I think we're better off taking photos and learning how to do HTML and CSS and getting the most perfect website ever. I mean, even if you were to go the route of WordPress, which I did for many years, having a WordPress is free, but you need to host the WordPress. And a good hosting service is between 10 to $20 a month. So all you have to do is click the link below and get the offer. You will get this special price, which is 50% off for the first year, but you're gonna get it for life. So get it now. I love my sleeping website. I love the business that it drives me and I want the same success for you. Get it now. For over 20 years, leading software developer Boris FX has made its mark on the film and television industry. Now, for the first time, our Academy and Emmy award-winning visual effects tools are available for photographers. Welcome to Optics. Optics is a collection of 160 filters for Photoshop and Lightroom. Simply apply the effect and launch the interface. Optics features thousands of customizable and creative presets for photo editing and effects layering. The top tools include lens flares for cinematic looks, realistic night skies with star fields and moon generator, add lightning with on-screen interactive control. The Easy Mask tool creates masks with just a few clicks. Optics is available now as a plugin for Photoshop and Lightroom and includes the standalone application for Mac OS and Windows. Get Optics now for 15% off. Visit borisfex.com, add Optics to your cart, and apply coupon code KELBY15. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Canon. Hey, did you guys catch that Boris FX had a discount Kelby 15 for 15% yeah. off? Okay, just making sure you got it. All right, I have a bonus tip for you. For those of you who like Big Macs. That's the only thing I like at McDonald's. I do like their Big Mac. All right, how do you get a Big Mac? Because you know, here's the thing about those buns I just showed you. You go to Wendy's and get a Dave's Double or whatever you like, and you put it on that bun and do what I told you. It tastes just like a win. I mean, you'll be stunned at how much it tastes like the real thing. Like, you won't miss eating bad burgers at all. Here's the bonus tip for Big Mac lovers. So what is a Big Mac? A Big Mac is two all beef patty, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. And if you're thinking, how does he remember that? It was an ad from when yeah, I was, was a kid. It was an ad, I remember two that. Two all beef patty, special sauce, lettuce, lettuce, cheese, cheese pickles, yeah. onions on a sesame seed bun. Okay, back to our story. But what a Big Mac actually is, is a bottom bun, a burger and stuff, another bun, a burger and stuff, and then the top of the bun, it has three buns. So what you do with the smart carb thing is this. You use, you open up the bun, you put the first burger, you, you go to you know McDonald's, get your Big Mac, put your first burger on, and then take a bun from the bottom of another bun. So you, you're gonna use one and a half buns. When you're done, you have the, the, the Big Mac structure. The, the bottom bun, a burger, middle bun a burger a top bun it's nine carbs come on nine carbs you know what a big mac is like 60 or 70 carbs sounds like they need to bring back the mcdlt for you remember when they had the I remember hot the side McD yep the hot the side and the cold side. side i remember the mcdlt yeah, yeah. yep and you know the what McD can i tell you something lt the uh the, the right now the mcrib is back it is can the i tell McRib you something is back every five years whether i want to or not i go I see all these commercials with McRib. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's better than I think. And I always eat it and go, this is not good. Now, I have a low bar for like a reason food. They bring it back. Yeah, dude. I'm, I'm like, it's, I got a low bar for that stuff. I still don't like it. All right. More tips later, but let's look at some photos. Because oh, I got boy. some good ones and I'm following up on Steven's thing. I got a good one. Steven, I got to, I'm going to rock your world with this tip. <laughs> all right. Let's look at some so images. Let's look at some photos. <laughs> Should we, though? Or is this now a cooking show? All right, here we go. All right. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. We went to Utah and Arizona. So these two just look like they're a little too bright. Yeah. Like they're obviously just after, well, this one could be, this has to be sunset, right? That's sunrise. Is it sunrise? Yeah, because it, it so rises bright? this way and it sets yeah, this way. Yeah, you're right. All right. 
Hold on. Because you know the mitten casts shadow. You know, it's like, got to yeah. be. It's got to be darker. You just got to bring down the. Yeah. There you it's go. It's just too much. It's too. Oh, that was too hot. Oh, it's too hot. And you, you really like the sunspots. Yeah, and the sun flare stands out a lot better, yeah. and it's just a lot better. You know, it's just too dark. Now, if you think, well, you can't see the buttes as well, you could open up the shadows a little bit. There you go. Now you got buttes, and the, it's just that it's thing a was beauty. Is it? <laughs> it's a butte, Clark. That's all you got to do there. Nicely composed, good shot. Uh, same thing with this one. My goodness, is this thing overexposed? Yeah. Uh, I would add oh. contrast, some texture. You're getting there. Pull back the highlights, maybe. Uh, you might have gone a little farther than that. I might have gone a little far. Well, it depends on what monitor you're looking at. Yeah, over here. And I think yeah. you got to go towards yellow. Yeah. And maybe add raise the vibrance a little bit. So, and then you you got to add a, you got to darken those edges with a vignette. Just bring in a little bit, a little bit of edge vignette. There you go. Yeah. So let's look at them side by side. Yeah, you just got to darken them up a little bit. And uh, you know, the, it's a good shot though. The, the, in the Milky Way shot's fine. I mean, it's good. Look at that F-stop to get that, that sparkle, F-19. Yeah. yeah. That's, you chose a very good F-stop to get the sun to do what sun you wanted spot. it to do. Yeah, that, that explosion. Yep. So, and I might have gone a little far with the color too. I, think I, I don't think it needed that vibrance. In fact, you might could pull the vibrance back just a hair. There we go. The one thing weird about the Milky Way shot was the composition. Yeah, let's Milky look at Way. that. Yeah, you see how the core is kind of offset there, but there's no reason. There, it, like, it doesn't tie into the landscape. There's no leading lines. You know, what's hard is you shot that. I, I, I think that's Bryce Canyon. I'm almost positive or something like that. Or any kind of canyon. And canyons are very hard with the Milky Way because it's hard to tie the canyon in with the milky way and the landscapes it's just it's, it's difficult <laughs> ea collins says these photos have 99 problems and none of them are carbs that's true i don't think he's talking about these photos Not these photos now these these are but good there you go. all right but so still a great it was a great great yep, exposure we just gotta get the exposure uh yeah. great composition here we go hmm Aren't those nicely done? Yeah, I really like that middle one. The middle one is yeah, money. Money. Look at that. Well, number one, it's a great pose. The light's coming from his hair. It's well lit. I mean, yeah. this is really, these are, do, people would kill to have yeah. photos like this of their kids. I would brighten okay, her face. So these are the ones where the parents would love it. But the but photographers the great love photos it. too. Yes. Photographers love These it. aren't just the parents love them. These are like are good quality. Yeah. Just put a little more light in there on her. And then I might have overdone it there. Yeah, I pulled uh, back a little bit. And then there we go. and then open up the shadows a little bit. So you see, uh I'm gonna have to paint down here a little bit. Still. That's, That's great stuff. Not, not good. I, I did a poor, poor job there of uh, editing that. But it, you get the idea. Yeah, great stuff. That's great. Yeah, th these are very, the middle one, very yeah, nicely it. done. Dude, that is... Forget it. That looks like something you'd see hanging in the White House like when he was a that, young man. That's, you know? that's a cover of a magazine dude, that or is. a, a, a and catalog. That, or, yeah, dude. And this is great, too. That's really a great... Yeah. great I mean, these are terrific shots. Yeah, I think I, that would look good in black and white, too. Yeah. Let's just go see. And you actually might want to do that just because of your style, you know, to kind of keep that same style. Yeah, keep that that uh, consistency. Let me go down to the uh, black and whites here, and let's find a, a appropriate uh, conversion. Actually, that one so, looks those are good there. those are some of the best. We've yeah, seen those as far are the those, children. Yes, like, yeah. very very good. High five. Really Definitely. Really nice job. Awesome stuff. Okay, let's look at what we got here. And the yeah. parents love it. That's a cool shot. Yeah. That's all right. 
that's kind of cool. They're just they're all over the place. You got a you have a yeah, automotive I'm, shot that looks trying to find my voice. I really like this. I, I think the leading lines and the car and everything's pretty cool. Um, this is a weird crop. So it's just now I would like to see this kicker light. So you have this light looks good on this side. And I like what you've done where you have a soft light here. This needs to be a harder light and a brighter light on that side. And I, it's just, it's kind of a weird crop. So let's get this crop looking better first. You're, you're like showing way too much of his chest. A portrait is about their face and you're showing like, you're making it about his chest. So it needs to be more like, geez, more like this. That helps. And then we got to, this light over on this side of his face, we got to really kick that up. So what if we did this? I'm trying to think of how to do this. Let's go to select and choose color range. Let's choose highlights. And let's just try to get that light on the side of his face selected over there. Maybe I can get a little... All right, let's see what that does. Uh, I got way more than I wanted. And then let's change that to screen, right? So I have this brighter version of him up here. Let's option click to hide that. On a Mac, it's option click. On Windows, it's alt click. So I'm hiding that brighter version of just the highlights yeah. behind a mask. Then let's get a nice soft brush. And then you're gonna reveal. And see if we can kind of paint in that brighter highlight on that side of his face. Something like that. I mean, that's not a perfect. Yeah, but still, it's not turn perfect. That on and off, yeah. But y you want that light a little more harder and balanced, and I think. Yeah. I think what, what happens is just show them that layer on and off. You can definitely. Yeah. Here's see the it. layer on and off. Yeah. See. Yeah, yeah. It's like sculpted the light. Yeah. Yeah, and you can dial in the amount you want. It's in its own opacity. Now, just just so you just so you don't have to rewind. Here's what we did again. I went under the select menu and chose color range. That's what we did. When it came up, I went and chose from the pop-up menu at the top. You can choose all these different things. I chose highlights. So the range is how much highlights, just a tiny little bit or a bunch. And then the fuzziness is kind of like the smoothness of the transition between the highlights and the shadows. So I just tried to, I'm looking at like this area right in here is what I was trying to make sure I had. Now it's selected way too much. So then you press Command J to put it up on its own layer. So what I have is just the highlights. And then you switch the mode to screen and that makes it bright. So that's where you see that brightness come in. That's what makes it bright. Actually, that looks kind of cool right there. <laughs> it's kind of a cool effect there. Yeah. He probably wouldn't like it, but it'd look cool yeah. in your portfolio. And then you hold the Option key on Mac or the Alt key on Windows. Hide that brighter layer, that screen layer is hidden. And then you paint in the light where you want it. And I'd probably skip that little part on his right there. Yeah. Yep. And then you have this. Boom. Boom, done. It's like you uh, increased that kicker. By the about the other stop. thing you could do while we're here, let's go back to the camera raw filter. And let's darken his chest area. Right in here does not need to be that bright. Let's go the other way. Sorry. Not, not smart. Let's try that again. Let me get rid of that pin. Hey, I'm hitting delete. Go away. Okay. And let's just darken this area here. I might be over darkening that area. Actually, let's do this. Better way to do this might be to get the graduated filter, mm -hmm. darken it, and drag down. Oops, other way. And drag up this way so it's a smooth gradation of color. There you go. That way. And let's also lower the highlights a bit because it's kind of. There we go. That's what we're looking Boom. to do. So let me just show you the difference between just that. All right, just the selective edits. I want to get out of this tool here. So look at look at his jacket and shirt on the right. 
versus the left. It's so bright on the left, it draws yeah. your eye. And it's, it's drawing your eye up away from his shirt, more towards his eyes. Yep. So there you go. You can uh, fix that up pretty easily. All right. Okay. But good photographer. Mm -hmm. You're doing good work. And that's fine art. It's nice. It's not blowing my mind. I think, you know, that's really good. That's really good. It's fine art. It's nice. Yeah. I, don't, I don't like it. All right. It's break time. Break time. All right. Before we go on break, it's time for another cool low carb recipe. So Stephen said, Briars has a great carb smart ice cream. Yes, they do, Stephen. I totally agree. Carb smart. What is it? Four carbs for a serving of, of really good ice cream. But it's not enough, Stephen. Let's take it up a notch. Here's what we're going to do. And I do this often. We're going to go get, here we go, check on my screen, Hershey's sugar-free syrup. It has five calories for a tablespoon. It's got three carbs and it's got like, well, zero fat, right? What has it got? Fat-free. It's fat-free. It's low calorie. It tastes just like syrup. It's really, really good. All right. So that's the stuff. But wait, oh, but there's more. All right, Stephen. Do you know that if you go get chocolate sprinkles, now I buy Publix brand sprinkles, a teaspoon, which is smaller, a teaspoon or a tablespoon? A uh, teaspoon. Teaspoon. If you take a teaspoon of them and pour chocolate sprinkles over that stuff and the ice cream and you pour chocolate, real straight up chocolate sprinkles, it's three carbs. So let's count them, Steve, and let's do this together. Four carbs for the ice cream three carbs for the syrup and three carbs for the for the uh, chocolate, real chocolate sprinkles, you've got a 10 carb delicious ice cream, drops the mic, boom. There you go. When we come back, we got another recipe. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Another recipe and more images. Stick around. We'll be right back. Eric Kuda here with the new Kelby One class. We're talking about the Canon EOS R5 in this class. So the new R5 from Canon, this is a awesome still camera, but even more, it is an awesome video camera. So we're gonna go over in this class, all the buttons, all the dials, all the menus, and getting like the real world, this is how all the menus, here's the systems, here's the buttons, here's the dials, here's the modes. This camera is awesome for somebody with stills that needs that resolution for their photography, either for high-end uh, commercial work, we need that resolution, or you're shooting a subject where you find yourself cropping a lot, getting in tight, and then when you switch it into video mode, you have an awesome video camera on top of that. So not only do you have a still camera, but you've got a top of the line awesome video camera that shoots up to 8K resolution, all the way down to 4K to full HD. Plus you're gonna get high frame rate and be able to shoot 4K at 120 frames per second. So if you've got your hands on this camera and you wanna learn more about this, check out my new class over at kelbyone.com. Would you believe us if we told you that you could fit studio lighting in your pocket? Well, Lytra has made it possible. Lytra is a global award-winning brand that designs and manufactures professional-grade camera lights that are compact, rugged, and waterproof. Whether you're using Lytra gear in a photo studio or underwater, Lytra's mission is to provide content creators with flexible and unlimited lighting tools that can mount on any camera, anywhere. Their lights come with a high CRI or color rendering index, making them some of the most color accurate lights in the industry. Due to the lights compact and rugged design, photographers are able to use the lights in ways that their studio lighting never could. Lytra has also made multiple lighting accessories available to fit your every need as a creator. Whether you're shooting portraits, nailing a product shot, or even flying your drone, they have got you covered. Lytra enables photographers and filmmakers to focus on their craft and create something beautiful. What will you create? This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Platypod, the world's most compact tripod base. Make sure you don't miss any episodes of The Grid by subscribing to Apple's podcast app or iTunes. It's free and we even have a special audio only version too. So sign up today. Hey, we're back. Scott here with the Kuna Man, Rocket Man. You just saw the ad for his R5, not the ad, the promo. Yeah, we, we did uh, 
we took the R5 and ran it through its paces all over the place. Rocket launches, air shows. You like that, that camera, don't you? Oh yeah, the R5 is great. R5. R6 is great. They're both R6. great cameras. Okay. Awesome cameras. So awesome. let's see. Okay, we Can't got go some wrong. winners. Did we, we told them how to enter to win stuff? To win stuff. I hope so, but if not, uh, you guys know that you just leave a comment. Uh, just leave a comment, tell us what you want to win. Uh, you either tell us um, what you want, and then we'll uh, pick one random person. Uh, in just a little bit here, uh, we'll be announcing those. But I think we've got a few more images to uh, go through, right, Scott? Uh, yeah, one second. I, I'm, I'm just one second. A few second. more images uh, to go through, and then we'll get to those. But. Stall. Speaking of, Christmas is coming. <laughs> and, you know, another thing we'll be giving away today is a Kelby One membership. But if you don't win, you can always get a Kelby One membership. It's still not too late. And uh, you can get a Kelby One membership over at KelbyOne.com. Um, big activity in the community lately. Um, so head over and uh, make sure you check out all the uh, activity going on in the Kelby One community. Uh, love that place. So there you go. Okay. All right, here we go. Back with you live. We're back. Okay, so let's look at some images. Let me uh, grab one here. Let's see what we got. These are interesting. Take a look. Hmm. Toidle. That's a hard shot, too. Those are hard. Angry eel. Dude, that's a toucan. great shot of a toucan. Toucan. Yeah. Now, these were probably taken either like in an aquarium. Probably like right, like the Florida Aquarium has a lot yeah. of stuff like this. But that it's either that or, or like Antarctica. a zoo could be a zoo, right? Or what? Or Antarctica. It's not Antarctica. All right, I really could like be out this. In the wild, you now, could be in Costa Rica. You could be somewhere. It could be Costa Rica. All right, but let me just say this. First off, I love the toucan, and I'm just a fan of toucans. And this is a very nice, tight, good shot mm -hmm. of a toucan. But the other two need some work. Now, what they need is there's a magical thing that you can put on these that will make these better. It's called dehaze. Yeah, dehaze. So when you're shooting through glass, I don't think you were shooting underwater for these. These were, I think you were shot at an aquarium or something. Go to the dehaze slider, drag it to the right, and it cuts through the haze to get you that sharp look to where it doesn't look like you're shooting through glass. Well, even if you're shooting through water, though, the dehaze would help. You're, right, even if you're underwater and actually do it. However, what the... The haze filter does its side effect. You know, like you have medicines that have side effects that, you know, yeah, everyone's the horrible. haze has a bad side effect. The haze's side effect is it makes things blue. It, it dark. If you have any vignetting in the corner, it makes it worse. And then mm -hmm. it makes everything blue. So after you add the dehaze, you go to your temperature and you drag it to the left to get rid of that bluing. And it just kind of brings back the original color. So look up side by side. You can see how washed out. That image was on the left. Yeah, and you see how far you could push the haze. You went to a hundred. I went to a hundred, and I could. I would also I maybe people, lower. That's what I find. I'm, a lot of people are like they stop at like five, and they're like, "Oh, yeah, that's no, enough. no, no." And it's like keep on going. Go as far keep as you need going. to, but then look, look at me lowering the vibrance. I'm down to minus twenty-five. I think that's kind of where, where the image color looks about the same. But look how much richer it looks. Right. Like, it, it, that's what you need on that. But that's a great tip because that's the thing. You have to know how to manage dehaze. Same thing here. Let's hit the dehaze. Scary. Do, do you yep, see the yep, blue, blue coming in? All in the shadows. Boom. Yep. And then get rid of that blue. Counteract the blue to get in there. This one isn't as sharp as the other shot. So, so we'll yeah, add a little that texture. That turtle shot's nice. That turtle shot is nice. And the toucan shot, come on, I love yeah, that. Toucan. Only thing I do with the toucan is a little dark. I'd open up those shadows so you can see a little more there. You can see now you can see his feathers and stuff. But that's nice. And um, maybe a little yellow in there. All right, anyway, I like the toucan shot. They're nice, though. All of them nice. Just a little, yeah. little post would help you there. A little post would help you there. What do we got here? I like that. I love that. Like a dome in a mm -hmm. building or something. Yeah, it looks like, like a Capitol building or something yeah, that's, like that. Yeah, that's very nicely composed. It's not boring. You got to get rid of that open sign. The f first thing is, 
our eyes are drawn to text. So if we see text, we read it. And then we look at the photo to figure out what Unless that means. Unless you're wanting me to read the open yeah, sign. Yeah, we don't want to read that open that's sign. That's what you do. No, I, I think you get rid of that open sign because it looks kind of modern. And then you, you get the timelessness of this shot. So there's, I think you, you picked the angles right, a lot of things right. Get rid of that open sign. Easy to do. This is great. It looks like a Verizon ad. I love it. Yeah. That's cool. I think I probably would lose that water bottle, the uh, Poland Springs yeah, the over Poland here. Poland Springs. The Moland Springs. Get rid of that. But those are good. Good photographer. Very good photographer. Good eye. Uh, Mr. Kuna, they must know you're looking at these pictures. Everything's coming in. Uh, oh boy, Milky I'll way. just leave it alone and leave it to you. All right. Well, let's go. Ooh, I Ooh, like that's that one. nice. I like that one. Ooh, dude, that's a winner. So definitely the middle one. That's your winner. So that's you did winner. everything right on that one. Um, you got the great reflection. You've got the mountain. Um, you got the right exposure. Uh, on the mountains in the background, so overall, and a and a straight horizon line too, which is always a a good thing. Well, there's um, something about the Milky Way in there. I mean, it just yeah, oh, it's great. And well, and you see, like there, uh, you did a good job about uh, having the Milky Way lead into something, so it's leading into that mountain range, and the mountain range is lit up there, so it kind of gives the Milky Way somewhere to go. Um, that's a very important. Like, so if you go to the next one. Um, Oh, I can't see it. Maybe. Well, I'm if you, sorry. Oh, if you go to the next one. There. Um, this is one where the it's it's okay. I mean, the foreground you can't really see predominantly what the foreground is. You might help be uh, might help you to kind of like open up the foreground there a little bit. Um, but then you, you can definitely tell that it almost looks like you blended because you see the horizon how there's like a blending going on, like a blending issue there, like you're trying to blend the foreground and the Milky Way. Um, the, there's just, there's not something right there. Uh, it's either a composition or you're done like a, a uh, it's like awesome. a composite where you've done something like that. So you gotta watch that. And then this one, this one's fine, except I would say that I actually think that the foreground's lit too much. Right. Yeah. It's actually too much, and the lighting also doesn't match on the foreground. Um, the foreground lighting is very warm. Um, it almost it almost looks like you had your red light on, like a red light on that's casting onto the foreground. You, can you see that, or is it just me on your screen? Yeah, I um, think it's... Uh... And then you can also see with your skies, the one thing I'll say is your skies are a, a little blue. Uh, and what's going to happen when you, you make your skies a little bit blue, so you see oh, that one's definitely predominant, where it's blue, you're going to lose those colors in the Milky Way. So you, you, I would actually adjust my white balance to kind of be more of a natural white balance with the Milky Way. That tends to happen around like 3,900 Kelvin, somewhere around there. So if we start pushing it a little warmer, uh, and then also push maybe also... Uh, push it uh, a little bit more, yeah, there you go, that now you can start seeing, you'll start seeing some of the colors in the Milky Way. See the core is starting to get some color in it where you're seeing like yellows and, and um, magentas and, uh, and other colors other than just blue. So if you, nailing your white balance on the Milky Way is very important because that's how you're gonna get those colors in the Milky Way to come out. Uh, if your sky is just blue, it's going to look like a blue Milky Way. You're not going to get any of that dynamic with that. So that's definitely something to do. But your middle shot there, that middle shot's great. That's awesome. All right, two last ones. Ooh, nice. <laughs> oh, look at that. Milky Way. Milky Way. I like that. I like that. I like the simplicity of it. The simplicity like, yeah, is very exactly. nice. Yeah, exactly. Simplicity. Fog always adds mystery. Yeah, it adds scene. atmosphere. Yeah. All right, this one's got a problem. I like it. I think you did a lot of good stuff here, but you got a uh, you got a problem. Let's go fix it. It's not in uh, camera raw. You got a you have a lens problem here. Let's duplicate the layer. We're gonna fix this quick. It's gonna be easy. If I can get to. Am I am I in Photoshop? What's going on here? I need to be in Photoshop. Hang on. 
something crazy. All right, here's Photoshop. Here's what you got to do. I'm going to duplicate the layer so you can see what's going on. Your image, take a look at my, take a look at me. Your image is like tilted like that. Like mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a, it's a distortion skewed. lens thing. It's like kind of, it's skewed. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to free transform. I'm going to hold the command key. If you're on a Mac, it'd be a control key on windows. And we're going to pull this corner up to kind of straighten it out. And then we're going to pull this corner down a little bit to straighten it out. And we might have to tug the whole thing over just a hair like that. I'm skewing it to the left a little bit. Something like that. Now that's just a kind of first look at it, but look at the difference. See how it was tugging down on that side? There's before and there's after. It needs more, I think, actually. Yeah, I think more. you could probably pull the perspective just up a little. There we go. That is, I'm holding Shift, Option, and Command on Mac, which would be Shift, Alt, Control on Windows to add perspective to that side. And let me see if I can get it a little more straight. And if it starts to get looking squatty, you can pull it out a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry. Hold Shift key and pull it out a little bit something like that watch the difference yeah 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 it's getting there so that's that's, that's what that's it was a lot better yeah and then maybe rotate it just a hair like that so we're yeah i think we're about there yeah and well that's a great great point with architecture is like especially with this because they're trying to get down low get in the middle of the church get the perspective and here's the other thing that and you i think you talk to this a lot with these older buildings, there's sometimes you get into them and stuff isn't straight. Even yeah, though it doesn't it's line supposed up. to be straight, yeah. it's not straight, but then it looks weird in your photos, so you have to correct it later. So, All right, we got some winners, and then I'm going to share my final holiday, after holiday, yeah, low-carb so recipe. So we got winners. So let's see. We've got the uh, I Garden think I Book. I my own show on it. So the Garden Book, uh, that one is from... Right there, the Creative Garden Photography book, and um, this that is, is by hold on Harold Davis. Harold Davis. Yep, Harold Davis Garden Photography book. Um, it's really nice. I mean, dude, E. A. Collins. Is... So E. A. Collins is winning the Garden Photography book. Then we have the Kelby One membership is going to book. Tracy Henning Cholin. 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 Yep. And then uh, we got Vic K has won the landscape uh, photography book. And then we the have- The light on landscape, Pat. yeah. Yeah, and then uh, Pat from, San Fr from SF is winning the Lytra 2.0. So got that. Then Richard Windsor is winning the Boris FX. And then we have Alan Norton is winning the Goose Decks. And then finally, the Slick Pick is going to Natalie C. Jones. So oh, there right. you go. Man, well, we gave away Merry a bunch Christmas of stuff today. And happy holidays to you. There, there you go. go. Oh yeah, make sure you email gridprize at kelby one dot com if you've won, so we can uh, so we get can you hook you the, up. Uh, the confirm right, information. Let's look on screen one more time. We'll look on screen. Here. Wait, come on, right here. Come on. It's a big difference. Hey, we didn't get to the last shot that they had the Milky Way shot. Let's go look at their Milky Way shot and let Mister Kuna tell you what up. What did well, you do? again, you could start seeing it. You start to see some of the color there in the core of the Milky Way. So uh, if you see in like that bright area, you're starting to see some color. But it's still a little blue, right? You still can see blue. As you're starting to pull it, you see how you're seeing more detail come out of the Milky Way? Or is it just me? Am I just crazy? No, right? you're seeing more detail. Right. So that's what it is. Really nailing your Milky Way white balance well, that's the one thing you can do to get way more detail out of the Milky Way. Everybody goes, I'm telling you, I've seen it time and time again, they go too blue with it. If you pull that up, and then what you could do is afterwards, if you want to add a tint to the photo, add a tint to the photo later. But that's what it is. is, is but I, I like this one about how you shot vertical, you've got a bunch of the, the, the core, and you've got it streaking down. I mean, and then I like how, because your foreground was obviously... It wasn't something like crazy uh, prominent, but it's just enough there where I can tell that that's a tree line. So overall, good though. But that's the thing is, yeah, getting that white balance nailed, you, you'll gain so much more detail out of the Milky Way. All right, there you go. All right, we're going to wrap up with my last tip of the day. Yes. It's a really, really Carbs. good one. So it's from a Carb chain. Tip. 
So there is a, is one of the fastest growing food chains in America, food restaurants, really, really good, super fresh food. It's called Blaze Pizza. Now they're, they're all over now. I mean, we just got them, we got them late to the Tampa Bay area, but they're here now and there's a number of them. What Blaze's thing is they, they bake everything fresh in a wood fired oven and all that kind of stuff. But their thing is you pay one price and get any toppings you want. So how does that bring the low carb situation in? They actually have a keto crust. They have a keto crust that's super low in carb. You can eat the whole dang pizza. Now, the pizza's not big. It's 11 inches. So it's what you and I would call a small pizza. It's not a large pizza. It's a small 11-inch pizza. And I was looking on their site to see if I could tell you what the... This is it right here, Blaze Pizza, B-L-A-Z-E. They got locations everywhere. There's just locations all over the country. Literally, one of the fastest... I read an article about them, one of the fastest-growing restaurants in America really great food but there it is they you can see right here it's got a keto crust it is gluten free but guys it just tastes like a crust it tastes like a very thin nice pizza crust but the carbs are super low and I wish I could find what they are well, I don't see the nutrition button but I looked oh there it is nutrition calculator maybe that will tell us no not the cheesy bread stay away <laughs> from the cheesy bread the cheesy bread is not that good. Looks that looks good. 11 inch pizza. <laughs> because the stuff that you're going to put on it, let me find the keto. Keto pizza. Really low. One slice is two net carbs. Two. So if you eat eight slices, it's 16. Come on, it's a pizza. And you can put all kinds of stuff on it. You can put chicken. You can put shredded mozzarella. None of these things are going to have really any carbs to talk yeah. about. Some zero and, and others. But that is what I just mentioned for that thing to be two carbs is the keto crust, red sauce, mozzarella, sh uh, then shredded mozzarella, applewood bacon, cherry tomatoes, mushrooms, and spinach. It's not exactly how I would get mine, but yeah, I would get banana peppers. And I would get pepperoni. None of those are going to add any carbs. Come on. This is good stuff. Delicious. Blaze go. is awesome. Really great. Their their toppings are so fresh, and and you can get as many toppings as you want. They charge like here's what a pizza costs. Put whatever you want on it: sausage, so pepperoni, 16. mushroom, whatever. It's really great. Have you ever had Blaze? Eric? No. So it goes from 16 carbs to four carbs. Yeah, so it goes the from regular, the regular one slice, slice is 16. 16. It, no, no, Eric. It goes down to two carbs because you you remove the fiber. Oh yeah, that's that's that fuzzy math. I got it. It's not, it's not crazy. It's very simple. You take the carbs, you, you delete, you re reduce it by the amount of fiber, and so that's be, your net it'd be, carbs. It'd be 15 down to two. 15 so down 15, to 15 two. carbs down to two. That's pretty good. So if you have eight slices, you're pretty talking good. 16. You're talking, you can eat an entire pizza versus one slice. Or two. Two pizzas. No, because one pizza would be 16. You don't want to eat two. You, look, even at the end of the day, you just can't keep eating multiple pizzas. This is why Eric doesn't give recipes. Because yeah. Eric would eat two pizzas. You can't eat, eat two, two pizzas. pizzas. You can't eat four of those cheeseburgers. you got to eat two. I'll tell you, though, you take my nephews there, and they're going to eat two, three, four pizzas. I know. Anyway. Pizza. We want you guys to have a very wonderful holiday, a great Christmas. I hope you get all the things on your holiday wish list from Santa. Hope you get lots of good stuff. What do you want? What are you hoping to get this? Uh, what, what is your on your wish list uh, for? I, I'm hoping to just get to 2021 and be fine. You just want 2020 to be behind us. <laughs> yeah. You want a vaccine for Christmas, don't you? No, no. I think I would just... You should I, get one. I would like... I would really love the the R6. Actually, that's what I really love. That that camera of all that I've shot in the last year. That that's actually. Dude, one I'm that about I, to buy I'm an R6. Like really, I'm really impressed with. I just sold my 200 to 400. Yeah. I'm getting an R6 and a 100 to 500. Yeah. Lens. Yeah, and I know. I mean, I'm. I, I say that as I am a Canon shooter. I know that there's other camera manufacturers and cameras. Like like uh, we have a class coming uh, on the. Z6 Mark II, right? Yeah. You know? and it's a great camera. Great camera. Not I just paid. don't shoot Nikon. Everybody makes Sony's right now are awesome. Yeah. Nikon's mirrorless, Canon's mirrorless, all of the mirrorless brands that you're going to buy. 
Fuji, awesome. whatever. Everybody's got great mirrorless right yes. now. Yes, there's absolutely. there's not a mirrorless camera that you can't that you can buy I right would say now. That that, I think that this pictures. year for everybody has kind of normalized all the brands. Yeah. Like where there's definitely Canon's offering, Nikon's offering, yeah, Sony and Sony's used to have offering. A distinct yeah. I mean they're that. very normalized now. Yep. Because dude, I I know so many people have the Nikon Z6 or the Z7, raving yeah, about them. It's great. You know and I know it's we've great. tried the Canon mirrorless. I have a Canon R yes. that I'm selling. And I mean, that's the whole thing. It's like, they're great cameras. It's just for me, like being a Canon user, like All right. it's nice to see that the R5 and the R6 are, are awesome, awesome. All right, well, thank you guys. Thank you again for being with us this year. Uh, we will, will we have a after holiday show or are we going straight to a... Uh... No, I think the week after we are all out of the office yeah, that week. Yeah, there's nobody here the week after so Christmas. So we are going to be taking a break that week. So we'll play best of or maybe just a break yes. or something. And I then think we'll we're be just back. taking a break that week. Yeah, we'll be back after the first of the year. I think we're going to have Christy Shirk on with us. The whole office is just going to take a break. We need yeah. a break. We're going to all get a break. <laughs> uh, is, is that right, Christina? Are we getting Christy Shirk? Yeah, we come back into the new year at first show, January 6th. January 6th. We'll be back with Christina Shirk as our guest. She is wonderful and incredible retoucher. And uh, she's just awesome, just as a person. Great photographer, too. She's a photographer. She's a retoucher. She's a teacher. She's a shark. All right. Mr. There we Kuna, go. Any final words? No. Happy holidays. Happy holidays, everybody. Thanks to our crew here who are always awesome. Christina and Ron and Jason and Juan, the dream team of people to be able to work with in a video. Great people and super talented. We're very grateful for them putting up with a whole year of the grid. And we will catch you guys in the new year. Take care, everybody. See ya. Close your eyes and picture a faraway place you've never been. What city or country comes to mind? Paris? Venice? The Grand Canyon? Maybe it's Morocco, Rio, New York or Hawaii. Now let's go a little bit deeper. Can you picture the delicious food there? What the people are wearing? Picture their smiles, the architecture, the museums. Don't forget the busy shopping streets and charming cafes. You can almost smell the delicious coffee and fresh baked bread. Vivid images like this can be more than just in your mind. They can be in your hands. That's why we love looking at travel photography and being able to capture travel images that are so captivating that they make people long to go there themselves, right there. That's truly a gift. When you create photos like these, you've inspired the viewer to seek out these new horizons, to have these wonderful experiences for themselves, and see these remarkable places in person. Creating beautiful travel images isn't luck. It's camera technique, it's creative expression, it's light and composition, and it's what you do after, in fact, in post-processing, that it all comes together to create simply unforgettable photographs. This January, you'll have an opportunity to learn for yourself exactly how it's all done, all online, where for two days, in two training tracks, you can totally immerse yourself in learning exactly how to create travel images that inspire, move, and impress. These photography masters will be sharing their latest techniques, their hard-earned secrets, and their post-processing wizardry during an event that will change the way you create travel images forever. All presented online, affordable and accessible. And it's for everyone who loves to travel and dreams of returning home with stunning images that capture the essence of their journey. This is the Travel Photography Conference, coming January 20th and 21. Your tour to making better travel images is about to take off.